Hi, Mark Heath here, and in this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to working with the Azure Functions CLI. Um, now, this is kind of a companion to another video I made on working with the Visual Studio 2017 tooling for Azure Functions. And basically, if you're wondering which one should I use, if you're making C-sharp pre-compiled functions, then go for the Visual Studio tooling. Um, the demo I'm going to do now is much more appropriate if you're making JavaScript uh, functions because we can use the CLI to not only create them, but to test them and debug them from in Visual Studio code. So first of all, how do you get the CLI installed? Well, basically you need to have NPM installed and install this Azure Functions Core Tools package. So assuming you've got Node and NPM, then you just need to run this command. Um, there is one thing to look out for. If you installed the previous version, you'll find that it's actually been renamed. Um, so you might need to uninstall the old Azure Functions CLI and install this one instead. But assuming you've done that, if I just get a command prompt up, you should be able to type func and we will see a nice functions logo and we'll see which version of the functions uh, tools we're running. And it also gives us a nice breakdown of all the various functions that we can actually uh, run. So what I'm going to do, I'm in a empty directory. So I've, got, I've just created a, a blank directory. I'm going to say func init. And this initializes um, this directory with a few basic files just to set up a empty functions app. So if I launch Visual Studio Code in the current folder, we'll see it's got a empty host JSON. We've got a local settings file that's not going to be checked into source control. We've got a git ignore file and we have got a um, Visual Studio Code folder that tells Visual Studio how to attach to the debugger, which we'll see in a moment. But we've got no functions in here at all. And we could go into Git and just commit those changes. So let's go back to the command line and we'll create our first function. So if I say func new, it will prompt me for which language. I've, there's a whole load of templates that come with this to get you started. As I've said, from Visual Studio Code, we'll be able to debug if we choose JavaScript. So that's what I'm going to choose here. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different templates for different types of trigger. We can be triggered by a file appearing in blob storage or events appearing on service bus and so on. Um, but I'm just going to do a very simple HTTP trigger. So this is going to set up a web endpoint and we need to give our function a name. I'm happy to accept the default. And it's created a new folder, HTTP trigger JS. In fact, if we just jump over to Visual Studio Code, we'll see here's our new folder. It's got the actual code for our function. It's also got a function.json, which has got details of the bindings. And it's got a sample file, and, and we can use this for testing. So I'll just change this to my name. And so we could we could customize this if we want, but I want to show you how we can actually run this function. And so if we go to the terminal here in Visual Studio Code, or we could do this from elsewhere, we can actually run this by saying func run and then the name of our function, which is HTTP trigger JS. And if I run this, it will tell me that it's going to basically launch the server that's going to host and run the functions. It's basically a local version of the Azure Functions runtime. So I'll say OK to that and I'll just drag this window on so you can see. Here we are. It's listening. It's listening on port um, 7071 and it's detected that I've got a function called HTTP trigger JS. And Actually, the run command not only starts that off, but it also calls the function and it's complained that it's a bad request. I needed to pass a name on the query string or in the request body. So I can, if I want to, 
I can specify a file that's going to provide the body for the test request. So I can say HTTP trigger JS sample dot dat. And if I run that, um, we'll see that it's been successful and it's saying hello Mark because I changed the data in that file to Mark. Okay, so that's nice and easy. How can we debug? Well, it's actually relatively straightforward. I'm just going to close that uh, function's runtime and I'm going to start again. In fact, before I do that, I'll just go into index.json and I'll add a breakpoint here. And I'm going to say dash dash debug at the end. So we're going to launch the function's runtime with debugging enabled. And there we go, it started off. And if we look on here, on the output from the functions runtime, we'll see that the debugger is now listening on port 5858. Um, it's actually already run my function um, and I haven't attached a debugger yet, but Visual Studio Code, because of the launch.json that Funkinit created, already knows that it can connect to the debugger on port 5858. So if I say debug, start debugging, we should successfully attach to the running function CLI. And now if I go back to here and I say the same thing again, I want to call my uh, HTTP trigger JS function. We see that we hit the breakpoints and we can hover over and we can look at the value of various properties. Oh, it's not in the query string, is it? It's in the body. So there we go, the body name is Mark. So I need to remember not to press F10 because that will stop my recording software. Um, that appears to have worked. Hello, Mark. And so really it's very simple to use the command line interface to create new functions, new function apps, and to just do some basic tests. So hopefully that gets you started. Uh, if you're using JavaScript, this is a really great way to work locally. Uh, if you're using C Sharp, as I said, I recommend that you use the Visual Studio 2017 tooling instead.